good morning to all of you so uh, we are uh, discussing about the abinicio method means that is the uh, developed from the fundamental principle and they are uh, we are not included any experimental parameters or no parameterization method you can say so uh, we were uh, uh, discussed uh, about this uh, uh, her uh, schrodinger equations for helium atom which one is the simplest uh, uh, molecule uh, for multi electron system you can uh, tell this okay so uh, you know that the problem of uh, to solve this equation is nothing but this term that is 1 by r12 this is electron electron repulsion term okay otherwise we could have uh, uh, separate the variables for electron 1 and electron 2 and we can ex able to express this as 2 1 electron schrodinger equation like we have done for uh, the system H2 plus uh, uh, H2 plus system where we have solved the H2 plus system exactly and within the limit of a born open number approximation okay so the impossibility of this analyti uh, analytic solutions of this poly electronic Schrodinger equations actually uh, prompted us or guided us to the Hartree's approach to calculate the wave functions and energy levels for atoms. So we are going to take another approximation that was developed by uh, Douglas Hartree and Fogg. And let's see what is that approximation. Uh, this is the simplest kind of ab initio calculation. And the most obvious thing is to assume here that in this approximation is that the electrons move independently of each other. Means that you have if uh, you have two electrons so they can move independently uh, of each other they are not interacting with each other okay so Hartree's method was to write a plausible left approximate polyelectronic wave function that is a gas wave function not the exact wave functions because we do not know exact wave function for an atom as the product of one electron wave function so we can uh, write that psi 0 is equal to psi 0 1 the psi 0 2 psi 0 3 psi 0 n and uh, psi 0 is the total wave functions of the molecule where psi 0 1 is the uh, wave functions for electron 1 psi 0 2 is the wave function for electron 2 so uh, these are all uh, one electron wave functions so whereas this is multi electron wave function so this multi electron wave functions uh, if it's the n electron so we uh, we can express that this n electron wave functions is the product of n one electron wave function so this function is called actually a Hartree product okay so here psi 0 this one uh, is a function of the coordinate of the electrons in the atom uh, okay and psi 0 1 is a function of the coordinates of electron 1 psi 0 2 is the function of coordinates of electron 2 so these are all the one electron functions psi 0 1 psi 0 2 are actually called atomic orbitals and it will be called also molecular orbital if we are dealing with molecule okay so next uh, uh, we <coughs> have the initial gas wave function that is psi 0 which we said uh, called zeroth approximation because they are uh, uh, to the zeroth approximation to the true wave function because we are not at all uh, still uh, started any refinement for this psi 0 okay so now we can solve the uh, uh, solve for electron 1 means this psi 0 1 uh, of a, this is a one electron schrodinger equation in which electron electron repulsion comes from electron 1 and an average of others or average uh, electrostatic field of all other electrons what i am meaning that we are going to solve psi 0 1 means that we are getting this wave function uh, this is for uh, wave function of the electron 1 and assuming that this electron is actually will face uh, the electron electron repulsion is like that that uh, for this electron one with the uh, a cl average cloud of all other electrons okay so for that uh, as a we is uh, facing an average field for that it's uh, the field is coming in this uh, uh, term that is uh, field is coming here so we'll uh, now discuss why from where it's a self consistent is coming so now uh, so after solving this psi 0 1 we are getting psi 1 1 okay so in the next we will solve for psi 0 2 while we assume that electron 2 is moving in the field of all other uh, electrons except 2 so we will get uh, uh, when we will uh, get the solutions we will get psi 1 2 
and in the uh, if we repeat the process for all other one electron wave functions then we will get the first uh, our uh, molecular uh, first the total wave function psi 1 from psi 0 to psi 1 we are uh, reaching and all this will be psi 1 1 psi 1 2 psi 1 3 dot dot psi n n psi 1 n okay so this is after uh, completing one uh, cycle we are uh, getting an improved wave function psi 1 so in this way we will improve again uh, that we will assume now we will solve this psi 1 1 with respect to all other uh, the average cloud of all other electrons then we will get psi 2 1 okay so and repeating we will get uh, the wave functions for the next cycle uh, that psi 2 is the next refinement that psi 2 1 psi 2 2 psi 2 3 and dot 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 okay so in this way we will continue and continue until we will get uh, so in each case it's like we get psi 0 uh, at the first so psi 0 and psi 1 and psi 2 and each step we are also going to calculate the energy okay so uh, we will continue until when we will get that energy of this psi k is same as the uh, energy of the wave function of psi k minus 1 means suppose you are uh, going to uh, uh, repeat this cycle suppose after 20 uh, cycle you are getting certain energy and after 21 cycle if you are if you get the same energy back means that your wave function is converged okay means they are not are now not changing at all so for that what does it mean that it become consistent with the self uh, uh, means that the earlier wave functions earlier cycles wave functions for that it is coming it is actually said uh, named as self consistent field so uh, at the stage of field cycle k is essentially the same as that uh, of uh, cycle k minus 1 that is it is consistent with the previous field and so the Hartree procedure is called the self consistent field procedure and abbreviated as SCF procedure okay so what are the limitations of this Hartree product there are two uh, major limitations are uh, problem in this Hartree product because uh, we are now considering the multi electronic system but still we are not considering the spin here and you know that electrons are being helped indistinguishable particles that called fermions so they must follow anti symmetric principles you have seen this many times so if we change uh, exchange the coordinates of two electron their sign must be changes so for example if we uh, assume that psi a is equal to function of x1 y1 z1 x2 y2 z2 and psi b x2 y2 z2 and x1 y1 uh, z1 then uh, it must be psi a must be psi b because here we are changing the coordinate of the two electrons okay but this Hartree product is symmetric rather than anti-symmetric okay so Hartree uh, product in Hartree product we do not uh, have assumed any uh, anti-symmetric condition so uh, if we assume that for helium atom uh, you have it to uh, two hydrogen 1s orbital so psi a can be replaced as 1s x1 y y1 z1 and 1s x2 y2 z2 so this Hartree product can be actually explained it uh, can be actually uh, uh, defined by the product of these two 1s wave function and psi b if you interchange the coordinates of uh, here it will come x2 y2 z2 here x1 y1 z1 then again you can see there as there is no sign changing then then psi a is equal to psi b is found but this should not be done because the elect, uh, we have to incorporate the anti-symmetric principle which what we found in the, our postulate 5. So these defects of hartree fock uh, method uh, actually corrected by Slater and Fock and Pauling and Slater uh, showed that the, as a first approximation of wave function can be written as a determinant of spin or vital and Fock developed uh, an explicit form of the Fock operator that acts on the wave function to create atomic and molecular energy levels in the Hartree Fock equations. So, in our next lecture, we will uh, show you that uh, how Slater uh, solved this problem by uh, writing the wave function in the form of determinant, and that is uh, called as Slater determinant after the name of celebrated scientist John Slater. Okay, so thank you very much.